over here working, right? I got my phone playing music, we're going rap, we're going rock, and trying to get this shit done, stuff high tempo. For some reason, it starts playing 90s pop. It's really dumb. <laughs> Richard, don't put that in the gun video. <laughs> What's up, it is Casey from Casey's Customs. I am working on a 1957 Chevy that I am LS swapping. In this video, I get the motor mounts done, I get the exhaust done, and I get the brakes done. Let's get to work. We are back on the beautiful 1957 Chevy that we are putting an LS motor in. Also, we're updating the brakes, updating the suspension, all kinds of fun stuff. This is basically my favorite car that I'm working on right now. First car I ever owned was a 57 Chevy, and they really have a special place in my heart. This is actually a customer car, though, and we'll probably end up doing a giveaway on it whenever it gets done. Or maybe I'll sell my Porsche and just give him a whole bunch of cash and then uh, keep it. But either way, that is a long way down the line. We are getting ahead of ourselves as usual. In the last video, I got the LS motor put in, but not really put in. Right now, I have the wrong oil pan on. I don't even have exhaust on it right now. A bunch of stuff is wonky. The motor mounts aren't even tied in. They're just kind of sitting there right now. The problem was the stock oil pan I have is wrong. The stock exhaust I have is wrong. So none of that would work. And I didn't want to make my mounts permanent until I knew exactly where it was going to sit with the right oil pan. And luckily, this is the right oil pan. This oil pan is made for Tri-5 Chevys with an LS swap and i also have the exhaust for it so we're gonna go ahead yank this out get the oil pan changed out and then we can get the motor in there some people might think well that's ass backwards why didn't you wait for this oil pan this oil pan took weeks to get here and i wasn't even sure it was the right one to begin with so it was easier just to get the stuff put in there the steering rod i took out is super easy to replace it took like 10 minutes to take out it'll take 10 minutes to put back so i wanted to get everything in there so i knew it would fit that way i could see exactly what i needed to order and now we know. Let's yank this baby out. First thing I need to do before we start yanking it out is move my transmission mount. The transmission mount is actually sitting exactly where it needs to be. So the motor and everything is on the mounts where they need to be. They're just not welded or bolted in yet. So the first thing I need to do is get a jack under there, slide that mount out, and then this whole motor is going to want to tip back like that, and then we can yank it out. Let's crawl under there. It is so cold I have to turn the heater back on. <laughs> Okay, she's out. Actually came out very easy, knock on wood, where... Oh my God, there's no wood in this freaking shop. Ah, oh, that's, that's not a good sign. That's not... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm an idiot. Knock on wood, it came out very easy. Hopefully, it goes back in very easily. I have popped a couple sensors off, draining the oil now, getting ready to pop the pan off. I don't love working on it on a hoist. It's super, super shady, but I'm going to try and get away with it. I got a couple oh shit situations. Just in case something goes wrong, it won't fall on me. We're going to do this as quickly as possible. So let's try and get this oil pan swapped out. Also, I just popped it open and took a look at it. It's really nice. This thing is like two inches of solid aluminum in some places. So very, very happy with the quality of it. I don't even know who made it. I can't remember. I just, it's off one of the ones off Amazon. It wasn't super expensive either. Let's not taunt the devil too much and let's get this thing out of here real quick. All right, here's where we get dirty. Oh my god, might have pissed my pants more than that. It just fell off the jet. <laughs> Come on, man. Why are you not? There we go. That wasn't that bad. Oh, I think that's just the indention in the oil. She definitely was ready for an oil change. Eesh, look how goopy that is. I don't know how low mileage this engine was. If it was low mileage, they had some really shitty oil they were using. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just the indention in it. That's all right. I thought I was stealing metal chunks for a second. <laughs> Looks like the gasket came off real easy, too. Now, we have to change. You won't be able to see it up here. We have to change the oil pickup tube as well. See it under there? It came with the new one because obviously it's gonna be picking it up more from the back than it is in the middle. So can I do this one-handed? 
kind of. There you go. We gotta change that out as well. We want it. We want everything in the rear now and not. This one's kind of in the rear, but it's a little bit more forward than the other one. Yeah, let's change that out real quick too. Check it out. Got the pickup tube changed. Got the new pan out, got the gasket sitting on it. Now, this is not light. <laughs> now we gotta get it up in there and try and make the bolts go on without this moving, even though this gasket is bent and kind of a piece of shit. Uh, we should be able to take care of it. And then I have a couple studs I forgot about that broke on the exhaust. Probably go ahead and change those or fix those now while it's out before we get it all back in the car. Let's tackle this first. Oil pan has changed. Great news, I don't have to get under this scary death trap anymore. <laughs> I did break a couple exhaust studs. It's an LS, so naturally we got broken exhaust studs. Well, that stud there isn't great either. Huh, I wonder if I should do it now or do it in the car. I might, you know what I do? I'm gonna probably put it down on the ground and then do these, maybe, I don't know. One of them is bolted to the exhaust stud, the chain, but I don't love that. That doesn't look great. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest fan of that bolt right there. Yeah, we're probably gonna drop it down and then we're gonna start fixing these exhaust studs. The way to do it is you weld a nut on the broken stud and then back it out. I think there's like four or five that need done, which is very upsetting. But yeah, let's uh, get it situated before we do anything. Okay, got her sat down. Looks like we have three broken ones on this side and then one on the other side. The very front ones are always known for it. Those break almost every single time <laughs> and naturally that's the only one that's broke on the other side now what you can do there's a bunch of different ways obviously one of the ways you can do is try and grab it with a pair of vice grips try and yank it out that way that's a real pain in the ass luckily the way these broke because they didn't shear off flat you know it didn't just break down in the block what you can do with these is take a nut that's a little bit bigger thread it on and then put a big old nasty weld on it so hopefully it grabs as much of that as it can and then you just use a socket around this nut to pull the whole thing out it's by far the easiest way to do it and it's usually the most successful way there's guys on TikTok that own machine shops. They have the machines to do all this. This is literally how they do it. They will weld the nut on a bolt and uh, get it out. So three on this side, one on the other side. I'm going to probably hit them with a wire wheel so that hopefully I get some of the rust off of there so the weld can grab it as best it can. Then we'll do it. So let's clean them up and start welding. Let's go! See if we can get lucky two times in a row. Alright, let her cool down a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. It's moving, but it ain't moving easy. Ooh, oh, I don't know if I'm turning or if the nuts. Ooh, it looks like it's turning. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it's cool. Notice how I said, how hot is it? And then I touched it 10 times to see, I'm a, I'm an idiot. Oh yeah, check it out. Awesome. All right, we got two down, we got two to go. All right, let's see if we can get lucky for a third time. Ooh, that's not good. Ooh, that one's really tight. That's not good. Oh, uh, maybe. Ooh, damn, that one. <laughs> that one is a lot tighter than the other ones were. We might need some more leverage. Here's where we round. Here's where we round the uh, nut off and just get really pissed. I can't tell. <laughs> that is not working as well as I'd like. Ooh, oh man, damn! Come on, bitch. Ooh, man, these front ones suck. Oh, it might have just twisted. It is still really freaking tight. Holy shit! Bada bing, baby. Three for three, haven't had one break yet. I probably just jinxed it by saying that, but let's go try the last one. All right, last one, let's see what happens. Ooh, oh wow. I don't wanna jinx it, but it, it's already pretty dang loose. Some people might watch this and go, why wouldn't you just use a socket? Socket has a better chance of breaking it off 
And also, a lot of times after you do the big weld on the nut, the <laughs> socket won't fit. But you throw an impact on this right off the bat, you'll just you'll just pull that weld right off of that stud. I mean, four for four, baby. <laughs> Four for four, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. Great news, getting those exhaust studs pulled out was the last of the prep work we needed to do before we can get her back in the car. It technically should never need to come back out after I get it in there this time. Oh, I, I take that back. There is prep work. I need to grind the metal, get it clean on these edges right here because that is where my mounts will go. You can bolt them in or weld them in. I'm gonna weld them in. So we need to get all that cleaned out. That's gonna be a hell of a lot easier to do right now <laughs> before there's a motor in it. So we're gonna do that, then it's going in. Check it. Surfaces are prepped. Went ahead and threw the mounts back on. Got everything ready. She is looking great. So, so happy. This was a very, very productive day. Granted, I've been here 10 hours, but still a good day. Let's get the old bitch thrown back in there. Check him out. She is in there sitting pretty. We still gotta finish up the mounts because I ran out of time today, but they're basically ready to go. I also changed the position of my chain. So right now I have it held up by the jack and then held up by the hoist so I can get it exactly where I want it side to side. When I had the chain back here in the middle, I kind of wanted to twist, but now that's it's sitting there with tension and it's just floating the way it should. So tomorrow we will come in here and get those mounts put up somewhere where they need to be and then put a big old fat weld on them. Do the same thing on the back and we'll uh, start moving to the next thing. I think once I get the mounts done, I want to test fit my headers. It gets really tight over there with the steering from what I've seen. So I want to get all that shit done tomorrow, but it is late. I am tired. So we'll be back tomorrow, baby. The next day. It's the next day. We are on the beautiful 1957 Chevy. I left here yesterday. I could not get my mounts to line up to the frame all the way. The motor's in there kind of crooked a little bit. The goal is I need to lift this up so I can get that mount over to the frame, tack weld it, get the other mount over to the other side of the frame, get it tack welded. And I'm going to go back here and check where my transmission tunnel is. I had a guy who does a bunch of these. He said, transmission mount, you want to add about an inch to them. So it drops it down a little bit lower. So you have no problems with your drive shaft tunnel. So I haven't done that yet. So whenever I get this where I think it needs to be i'm gonna crawl under there and make sure i have plenty of room for you know shifter and all kinds of fun stuff like that because this car i don't know if i've shown it or not this car has a very very nice interior and i do not want to come in here and have to cut all that up so basically i'm rambling i do that whenever i don't want to work it is also so cold right now i can't feel my fingers and i think i might be able to see my breath on camera which is not good for a video so let's kick the heater on and get our asses to work But I'm gonna go check the transmission mount. Okay, I think we are 100% mounted. Let's go take this jack off and see what happens. Ooh, jack off, I said. Take, take the, the jack, jack off. off. Hey, hey yo. The mounts are in the right position. I got a big old ugly weld on each side. Not fully welded, but basically big enough tack welds that will hold the motor. This should be the last time I need this jack, but I haven't taken it all the way off. Let's see. Ooh, we're good, baby. Make sure. Everything looks good, hell yeah. She's in, baby! She's really in now. I got the transmission uh, mount in. It does look like it's off a little bit, like maybe an inch too far that way. But I got it bolted in, but I can adjust it. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with it right now. I do wanna see if I can get my headers on the way they are, or if I need to order new headers, or if I need to cut these headers up. Let's start doing that. I do wanna kinda get some of this shit out of the way so I can see how it's gonna look. I might go ahead and take, well, I'll leave the chain on for now, but I shouldn't need it. Oh, actually, no, I think I'm taking the chain off because uh, right now I have it bolted to my exhaust. 
Oh, that's my transmission. Yeah, some of this shit needs to come off too. Some of this shit we gotta strip. Sweet. All right, let's take it apart and then we will uh, start throwing our manifolds on. So hot. <laughs> You know what, I should shut up before I jinx it. This side looks better. This side is good. Driver's side looks like a train wreck. I am not, I'm not liking this driver's side so much. Yeah, this side is really good. Thought I jinxed it. <laughs> I have a ridiculous amount of room on this side. I put the mounts in right, but I feel like everything can come this way a bunch. We're gonna do this the easy way. There we go. Sweet! Okay. Passenger side is in and looking good. Very, very happy. I kind of just semi-mocked the driver's side up there. And this steering box is a giant pain in the ass and it is really in the way. So let's see what happens. Hopefully I can just get away with notching one of the tubes and then maybe re-welding it or something. I don't know. Let's, uh, it's gonna be a train wreck. So let's get into it. I've had this in there 10 different times. Look how dirty it is. These were clean 30 minutes ago. I don't see, originally I thought I could just dent this tube. A lot of people that do these swaps that still use the stock steering, they'll end up denting this tube. DD Speed Shop, he's doing one. He has a big dent in that tube. I've probably seen a hundred people do that. I'm looking at it. I don't see how that's gonna fix anything on my end. I assume it's just because I'm not as familiar with it as other people. But what I'm gonna do, because I'm a welder, is I'm gonna cut this tube out. I'm gonna cut it completely out here and here, and then I'm gonna get in there and see what'll fit. And then what I'll do is refit that tube back in there. I was just gonna dent it, like it looks like other guys do, but I'm worried I can start denting it and it's not gonna work and I'm just gonna end up collapsing this tube trying to get it to dent so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. That way I can make sure everything fits and then we'll go ahead and dent the tube or just reroute the tube maybe. Maybe I'll bring it down here and back over. I don't know. I'm just saying all that to say, let's cut some shit. Nothing like cutting up brand new parts. Exhaust. <laughs> All right, hopefully this fits. <laughs> Okay, so um, they're in there, but we ended up having to cut <laughs> two pipes now. It's a train wreck. The good news is the third pipe I think I'll be able to use just fine. It looks like the second one's going to have some issues, which is funny because when I was watching videos, it looked like most guys had problems with the third pipe. Unless, of course, I just watched the video wrong, <laughs> which is definitely a possibility. Let's start putting some of this Lego back together, see if we can get it figured out. working right i got my phone playing music like i always have we're going rap we're going rock i'm trying to get this shit done stuff high tempo for some reason it starts playing 90s pop so it's like in sync britney spears christina aguilera i have no idea i've changed it three times it'll play a couple more rap songs a couple more rock songs and then it goes back to 90s pop it's really dumb <laughs> Just another playing your game for two. It ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Richard, don't put that in the goddamn video. <laughs> Are you serious? We did it, baby! It's in there. Sweet. Okay. Check it out. Exhaust is in. I have a ton of room here which is great. I did have to dent it in a little bit. For some reason, I don't know if maybe it's because it's back like an inch back in the back, 
maybe it's just catacorded enough where this just isn't working, whereas other people seem to make it work a lot easier than this. I had to end up basically taking a full inch out of that second pipe. The third pipe, I didn't have to move as much, but I did have to like slightly rotate it a little bit. But either way, we're good now. They need fully welded, uh, but I'm gonna do that a different day. I'll take it off and completely finish it, but got them in there. Super, super happy. I am going to fit the brakes on there, a couple other things, just to make sure everything is sitting good, and uh, then order our radiator. I thought I already did, but apparently I haven't, so I need to order one. But whew, she is in. It's actually sitting on its own brackets. Everything is welded in. Nothing should need moved. And now we have exhaust, but let's double check our brakes and shit. spring on that side it's a little lower on the driver's side whenever we put the drop spindles in one of the springs twists a little bit but it is on its own suspension has a motor in it that is not just sitting there it's actually bolted in i am so excited with exhaust with the brakes with the steering god damn that's gonna be a fun car man oh, check her out i'm so excited damn that looks good i'm so happy it just looks badass Big whole motor in there. I know LSs aren't the most big motor in the world, but it fills it up a lot better than the old 283 did, and I just love it. Granted, I am biased because I love 57 Chevy so much, but that just looks really, really good to me. I'm super excited. The last video, I had it sitting in here without a jack, and I was pretty excited because I thought it was actually on the mount. No big deal, I'll just weld them. And then I came in here, whatever, a couple days after the video was over, I realized it was actually sitting on the crank. The crank was sitting on the frame. There was no way it was ever gonna run where it was. The mounts weren't even close. So having to redo all that, but having it right now is awesome. Exhaust is in, brakes are in. Obviously we gotta do lines and stuff, but just really, really happy with how this car is looking. It's came a very long way. We have so many cars in the rotation right now that we're building. We're gonna have another video coming up on the 55 truck. I'm gonna have a Porsche video coming up pretty soon. So just stay tuned for all that. If you are not already subscribed, hit that button now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, comment, all the good stuff they tell you at the end of the videos and check out some of my other videos. Peace, love ya. By the way, um, I know the video's over. It is so cold, look at this. I turned the heater off for 30 seconds to film an outro. I hate it! I